you. Thanks so much for coming. We really appreciate you coming out and showing interest in the library and in your community. I'm Holly Tiesel. I'm the library director here. I've been here for 16 years. Um, we have these half sheets right here, and these are forms that you can fill out with any comments or questions. Uh, you can leave your phone number on there if you want us to call you back. That's just if you don't want to speak up during the meeting, you can go ahead and fill these out. You can also use this uh, to vote uh, on which property that you want us to go forward with, and we can get to that later um, because that's going to be part of the discussion. We also have here our surveys. This is our uh, library facil facility survey. This is the last of the series of surveys that we've been conducting about library services and programs. And if you want to fill out a hard copy, we have them here available. They're also on the back table and in the library. And it's also online. And all of the past surveys are also available to take there. And we appreciate all of your input with that. So all of the data that we're collecting from these forms and from the chat online, the votes, your comments, all of that's going to be used uh, to help the library board make a decision about what we're going to do going forward about the property for a library. There is a library board meeting tomorrow at seven o'clock in this room. It is open to the public if you would like to come to that as well, because the library board is going to be trying to figure out what it is exactly that we're going to be asking the township board for. So that township, we are on the agenda for the township board meeting on March 7th at seven o'clock at township hall, uh, because we don't own any of these properties. They are owned by the township. We are part of the township, but it's the township board who gets to make a decision on the use of property. So um, that's kind of like the steps that we're going to need to, to go through for, for this part of this. Um, just to give you a little bit of history to where how we got to where we are uh, right now, as some of you who have lived here since 2015, 2016, uh, you may know that in 2015, we engaged Quinn Evan Architects, which is Ann Dilcher. She was part of that group. And then this is uh, Yao, who's also from Quinn Evans. And they did a feasibility study for the library in the township at that time about a new library. We reviewed nine different properties at that time. And the number one property was the Mill River site, which we're going to be talking about later. And that's what we went on the ballot for in 2016 for a new library. Uh, the second site actually from that feasibility study was the 11 mile Milford Road property, which we're also going to be discussing. So um, we went through that with the whole process. We did three public meetings to get community input at that time. So we went on the ballot for a 24,000 square foot building and an operating millage at the same time. So we realized in retrospect that we probably asked for too much at once. And that was one of the reasons why it didn't um, go at the ballot. And I know someone asked me earlier, so, but our, it was 43% uh, yes, 57% no at the ballot in 2016 for the library, um, for those of you who wanted to know the answer to that. So in 2017, we went back on the ballot because we still needed an operating millage to run here. And so we asked for a little bit more of an operating millage so we could increase all of our programs, services, collections, hours, do all the things that we, part of the things that we wanted to do with the new operating millage and a new facility, but we tried to do everything that we possibly could by still staying here. Um, and we've, we've tried to do that, but we've kind of hit a wall. We don't, literally, we've hit all the walls. We can't, there's nowhere to go. Um, in 2019, we engaged an outside consultant to help us do a strategic plan for the library, which involves surveys, focus groups, meetings with stakeholders, and the definite answer from that work was that everybody wanted a new library. So we engaged Quinn Evans again at that time to come up with a proposal for what exactly would we need in that library? What could the space look like? What, what would we have for a 19,000 square foot facility? So we sized it down from what we asked for in 2016 to be reactive to what the voters had um, asked of us. And in March of 2020, and we'll all remember March of 2020, but not for this reason. Uh, we asked the township board um, for the use of the Mill River property 
for a new library and that project was declined um, at that time. And our intention was to go forward to work with the township right then to come up with the possibility, but obviously everything kind of came to a standstill and we flipped to trying to provide the best uh, services that we could during the pandemic. So once things settled down a little bit more, we tried to get back into working with the township through a series of meetings that we've done with them to figure out where could we put a new library. So each of the three properties that we're talking about tonight are all township owned. And so we are trying to make the most fiscally responsible uh, project so we don't have to purchase property. So all of these would not incur any more costs for the uh, purchase of property. Um, and we asked Quinn Evans again to come up with a study to look at the costs of a library project on um, all of these three. So um, I'm gonna hand it over to Ann, who's gonna go through those projects. And uh, do you wanna wait for questions till the end? I think it would probably be most helpful if it's a, if it's a quick clarification um, of, of something I've mentioned, uh, do, do speak up. Um, otherwise, I think we'll sort of go through a rhythm of our pros and cons and what we looked at in a site and what we looked at as costing on that site. And then we'll go proceed to the next two sites, um, going from north to south through the, through the township. And, uh, but first, thank you. I'm happy to be back. Good evening. I, um, I do like to, uh, to come here because as we do libraries across Michigan, the Midwest, and our firm does libraries on the East Coast as well, I can say you, you're one of the most engaged groups. It's you always sort of pack the small space that you do have to come and listen and be uh, active and concerned about what's happening in your community and with the library. Uh, so it's always good to, to have a, a crowd that's so engaged on this. So as Holly mentioned, the three sites here you'll see on the screen are um, sites that we did consider um, the number one site, the Mill River site and the number three site uh, that we'll be looking at were the top two sites that came out of our previous study. Um, in, and in that study, we looked at uh, properties that were township owned, properties that weren't township owned, just where uh, the possibility were would be for the library. Yes. This is a quick reference. Is there a location that you could point out on the map as the center of our Lyon Township? Number two is where we're currently at. Is that the center? Number of the, two is where we currently are at number, in number terms three. of. Number three is the center of Lyon Township. Yeah. Number three is closer to the center yeah. of the township that we no, have. Don't forget in Miles. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh -oh. I need to scroll. Just take some. Just takes a minute to change the page. So hopefully change. So going back to just a reference point, we've updated numbers. When we did our study um, in 2015, 2016, we sort of look at libraries when we're doing library parent planning at the very macro scale is sort of understanding the size of the community and the size of the library. And so we did this and we've updated it for people to kind of understand what libraries are adjacent and, and where you fit regarding population aside of the building. Clearly, every library has a different focus. Some have more of a program, some more have their collections, some have a very special collection that they highlight. Um, I know from the work I've done here, programs have been a big uh, important part of this, um, of the Lyon Township Library. But on the very macro scale of a rule of thumb, we just say about one square foot of library per person in the community. Um, so that's the, the between. And so you can see here, Salem South Lion, population to size of building is a little bit over that. Milford over it by more, Wixom a little under it. And then you can see where we are sitting here today, um, really that striking deficit of what people would say, you, you need a new library 
space is very clear just from that just from that number zone of trying to provide quality service, um, those sorts of spaces are needed. So as we look, oops, sorry, we went up one. So as we looked at that, um, for the Mill River site, this we did a little bit more development work uh, in 2019 for the library. So we have our, a little more detailed planning to show. As we mentioned, it was a concept of design that was developed. Things that we did like about this site was that there was already that sort of Abbey Lane drive where access could come off of into a library parking lot. Uh, the layout could put the library close to Milford Road to give it that public face. And there was space to have the parking tucked behind the building. Uh, it gave us a good spot in looking at a library in a community such as this, not an urban downtown library. We um, pretty much always recommend to have a drive up book drop. That's gotten even more important in terms of the pandemic. We're seeing even libraries that are, you know, maybe tight and close in uh, urban centers trying to figure out how they can have that drive up to get uh, curbside materials or to drop off curbside materials. And we always want that place separate from how people are coming in. So there's not the junction between kids coming into the building and people driving through drop offs. And this uh, site also um, we like because it gave uh, us sort of clear space to see for future expansion for the library. So if we built it and, and how we looked at designing this was so that you could have a system to, uh, to increase the size of the library in a logical manner in the future. So this slide just was a quick recapture. Like I said, we did a little more planning on this uh, building than we have on the others uh, because of where it was in the in the study, uh, looking more exactly at what types of rooms the library would really need and how it would fit within this 19,000 square foot footprint, which was um, really based on what the library felt they could come to and was a dollar amount that felt like they could maybe get support um, from, the, from the community to pay for. And so that was that 19,000 square foot number. We've come back and looked at that. Clearly, um, costs have risen from the time that we were looking at that. So we looked at updating our costs uh, based on uh, several libraries that we have completed recently and talking to contractors who've done some libraries we think would be fairly comparable um, as well and what, what their numbers might be. So the costing numbers that we've done here are very rough cost per square foot numbers, just to get an order of magnitude in terms of what the cost drivers are on each of the sites. Um, and we've looked at the site work, we've worked with uh, civil engineers to, to look and say, evaluate, you know, which is has a higher cost, has to bring utilities farther, where are utilities closer? So what's the magnitude of the site work cost per acre for each of the each of the sites. So that's where we've uh, plugged in the numbers. So you can see on this project, we come in at um, just under 10 million in terms of a total project cost, including um, you know, architecture and engineering fees, your, your furniture in the building, your technology in the building, um, and all the, the site work for it. Uh, this one, we do have a note that there is a, a consent judgment that has to be understood and, and worked through, and there's the potential that that would cost an extra uh, million to the project. So if there's questions further, that could be discussed. I'm not going to go into the details on that at this moment as we get through the, the sites. So moving to the site where we were, since we had done that work and that planning work on the Mill River site, 
we really took that 19,000 square feet as sort of our fixed comparable number. So when Holly asked us to look at this site and to look at the 11 mile and Milford site, that 19,000 number was our apples to apples number that we were gonna look at. Now, if you can see on the screen, you'll see here, we had called out a building that's two stories, that's 22,000 square feet. This really gives us the apples to apples comparable comparison of 19,000 square feet of program space within the library. Because on this site, we would need to go to a two-story building to fit in the requirements of the parking that the, the, a two-story building requires two exit stairs from that top floor, it'll require an elevator. And so you have to build a little bit bigger because you're building in all those circulation elements. So that's why this is listed as a 22,000 square foot building where in reality, the amount of library space that you're using and enjoying is the same 19,000 square feet that we've kept at the other two sites to give a more apples to apples comparison. Um, I will say on this site, I kind of read our list in preparation for tonight and thought, wow, we, we, uh, we're missing our pros on this site. We only have a list of cons. And I, I, I'll say the pro is the library's here already. So people know the library's here already. So that's the, the one pro that I've come up with. Um, the library did or did authorize and have um, some geotechnical borings done on this site as part of the study. And those um, confirmed there were some rumors about the soil conditions here, and they confirmed that there are core soils on this site and that you need to go down 14 or 15 feet to get to stable soils. So building on this site also means that you are going to have more expensive foundations for your building. It's going to be a more expensive building to build because of the poor soils on the site. Uh, so that's one of the pieces that builds into that cost driver. And the other piece that builds into this is um, that if we build on this site, then where does the library go during construction? So the library needs to move out, find a space to move out. That means you're renting a space, you're gonna have to pay something for some kinds of improvements to make it work as a library, you know, you're not going to spend a lot of money on that, but you're going to have to, you're going to have to do something clearly for it to be as a library and then the rent and utilities on that. So those also drive into the cost of using this site for the library, whereas at the other two locations, you can keep operating here until a building is in place and then you just move once into the new facility. And then I think the final piece on this, going back to that piece of having a two-story library um, for our new libraries, especially sort of the size we're looking at here, we um, pretty much always advocate for a single story uh, for staffing reasons. You can imagine if you have a two-story building, then you definitely have to have staff on each floor and can they see each other and communicate with each other if there's an issue on one floor that, that needs to be dealt with by more than one staff member. And just sort of for that, that safety of staff and of patrons. And also um, the two story usually runs into the concern of you're dividing youth and adult and they're not visible between the two. So are you comfortable leaving your kid in one space while you go grab something, but you can't see what they're, <laughs> they're up to or doing or that kind of connection. So those are kind of the items that roll into, again, a negative looking at this site. So you can see here, looking at the uh, cost piece on the site, we've tried to build in some of those pieces. You know, we've kept the cost per square foot of the building, but it's going to, it's going to be a larger, amount that we're building um, and it's going to be more expensive with the deeper foundation work that's needed on the building. Um, similar coming through square foots for the furnishings and here we're coming up with about 
No, we are not. Yes. Does this include, you mentioned that uh, moving to another location for a year, there'd be some cost involved in that. This, that? this includes $140,000, um, which is uh, a general estimate. It's not based upon finding a location here, but we recently renovated a library of, um, of about 19,000 square feet in Alpena. And so we scaled those numbers down because that library we did have recent in terms of their costs for moving. And so that was our cost comparison from up in Alpena uh, for doing that. There's one other question in the chat pertaining to this particular location, the site. Um, they asked, what exactly does poor soil mean? Poor, poor soil means, uh, in this case, that it's very high groundwater and um, it's silty, so it's not, it's not strong enough to hold up the, the building. The soil has to push back for the building pushing down, if that makes sense, in terms of the structural capacity. So it's really that structural capacity of the soil, and you don't want the you need to build those deeper foundations to keep the building from sinking down in the ground. So then moving to the third site, the 11 mile Milford Road site, uh, up on the screen is a uh, plan that has been looked at um, just to get some cost information and understanding um, what a park layout in a couple of phases might be. So this is something that the township had put together uh, with their engineers just to start looking at the site and understanding any feasi feasibility and costs of using this as a park. Um, it's not park planning that was, was done by, by us or by the library board. And we can't tell you how how viable or how real the prospect is of this park going forward. Um, but this was the work that had been done looking at that and looking at some costs in terms of what it would take to cross, come in off of 11 mile and, and cross the drain at the very south there of the property and create some parking and start to create a, a park. So, Looking at this, we looked at a couple options for how you might insert a library into this park plan and have a joint park and library um, uh, you know, facility and cooperate in that. So um, one option that we looked in on this was an option of um, inserting a one-story 19,000 square foot library up to have sort of the Milford Road face on it. Um, this is where they had planned a second phase of several kind of court spaces, uh, volleyball, pickleball, things like, like that in the, in the plan that could maybe be rearranged to other places in the, in the park if they were desired. And we looked here at then adding um, some additional parking to the parking count that they had thought would be needed for the park. Uh, so we've added 45 spaces, um, assuming there'd be you know 15 spaces or so in that lot that was already planned that the library could use um, in terms of different times of activities. So this was one um, option that we looked at. Again, it's shown and shown providing for future expansion to the north. This site again is large enough that comes back and we can start to look at a building that could have future expansion as an option. And the second option that we're showing here is um, sort of taking away one of the large uh, soccer lacrosse uh, type fields and using that for the library. Um, again, with some added parking, added space for outdoor ex expansion. This pulls the building, you know, more towards an entry on from 11 mile away from Milford. Uh, it's uh, the one thing we did like about this is if there was ever there's a future amphitheater 
um, shown on the plan and this for the drive up book drop pickup lane could also then serve really as a as a drop off lane for the ball fields and for the amphitheater looping through if you had someone with uh, mobility issues that needed to be dropped off closer or you had a kid in all their bags and you were running late you could drop them off and then go go park um, here you'll see we have um, a small note of a potential alternate entry at Milford Road. This is something that we, we did investigate um, some. We talked to the, to the road commission and it did sound like that that might be, a, um, we didn't get a hard no, I'll say, that they looked at it and looked at the site, di site distances on it from the road commission. Um, and they thought at least for a library use on the site, um, that that would be, could be a potential option. And that would be a, a great savings because as we go to the next page and look at costs, there's a lot of costs involved in just getting onto the property when you have to cross the, the drain there at 11 mile. So here looking at the cost drivers of this, uh, of this site, um, we've looked at the site work and then we've added in separately a full cost of um, crossing the vehicular, crossing the drain coming in off of 11 mile. And also um, the library felt strongly that you would want to pay from Milford Road to that entry so that you're not coming through gravel road and then onto the onto the property. And so we have a line item there included looking at recent paving work in the township to estimate that cost, which is a little over 200,000. Um, you know, we think if there was a park gonna be built on this site, there could be a potential cost savings with the township. That would be a negotiation uh, clearly to, to, to look at that cost. Um, on there. Otherwise, uh, the building of the new building is fairly similar as the furniture and technology costs are going down. Um, site work is a little higher here because the connections would require uh, directional drilling to get them under the drain and onto the site for the water and the sanitary on there. Um, trying to see what we did not um, include. What we did not include was if there were traffic signal improvements and if the um, pedestrian pathway that comes in at the corner um, of 11 Mile and Milford would come across and have its own pedestrian crossing there of the drain. So there's sort of some more site work um, items involved in the, uh, Milford and 11 miles. There are a few questions about this property. I figured I'd just go ahead and throw those out here now. There are some general questions that we can address at the end, but I figured while we're going through the individual site. Um, so the first one, what happens if the library is built at 11 mile and the rest of the park is not built? We don't know. Yeah, I think that would be the discussion and we would be planning for it so that it would could be a standalone. And that might impact uh, which um, which lo which location the drive came off of, uh, because it appeared that the drive off of Milford um, would be acceptable for a library use. Whether they felt like a drive off of Milford would be too heavily used if it was park and library use, so it might affect that. And then we would build the parking if 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 we didn't know if or when the recreation function happened, we would build a full parking lot of 60 cars to meet the needs for the library. Okay. Um, and also um, from the library's perspective, we think that a multi-use municipal site would be probably very um, interesting to a lot of people in the township and would offer a lot of amenities that people are looking for. But what the township's interest is in going for, we can't speak for them. 
about what they would want to plan for uh, for the future, that's obviously something that we'll be bringing up uh, with them, but we can't speak for them. And that's the last slide. So we can go ahead with the questions. questions. If there's more questions on the chat or in general on this site or on any of the sites. Okay, there are a few in here. Um, uh, one question was asking if the Mill River site is um, the existing garden right off of Milford Road at Abbey Park entrance. And I believe that is the case. So that is where that property is, where the garden is would not be affected by this because that's on the north side of the drive that would not be on the same piece of property. It's kind of across the street. It's sort of where this arrow is pointing. You'll mm -hmm. see a north south arrow on mm -hmm. here. And that was pointing to that connection to the community garden. Mm -hmm. OK, and it, she had a follow up that northbound Milford Road traffic left turns are prohibited into Abbey Park. However, mm -hmm. I believe that's there's two entrances. There are two. Uh, there is a uh, northbound entrance. It's just farther south. Right. We have a question in the back of the room. Uh, I'm not sure you may have even answered this. Um, looking at site number three, and I understand there's complexities with the water, the electricity, and the sewer. Level. But in terms of the actual dollars per square foot, can you give me some idea what that would cost up there? I mean, I understand some additional site plans, but. What are we talking about for the 19,000 square foot library? For, well, for the library there, for the total project cost that includes the work coming across, coming off of 11 mile, which is the definitely more expensive, we're at um, 11.6 million. And if we took out sort of that cost for crossing and getting on to the property itself, we're more at like 10.8 million. So the additional 800,000 would be because it's, of there's the about an of the site. additional 900,000. So well, where I was going yes. with this, site number one was $526 a square foot. If you take the 19,000, I think. I think you said it was $10 million, if I heard you correctly, right? Yeah, just under 10. Okay, yeah. Well, I, I yep. 10 yep. Sure, that would be a good. So the dollars per square foot would be just a little bit more for the 11 mile site. And I'm excluding mm -hmm. additional monies for the crossover. That's all I want to know. Yes. Yeah, the cost difference between site one and site three um, is is around eight hundred thousand. Yeah. Thank you. We have some more in the chat. Um, is the township far enough along in planning for the fire department headquarters slash safety complex to know a rough square footage of the building? That. Um, I did forget to mention that. I'm sorry about that. On the mill, um, on the Mill River site, as we started into this process of updating the costs and looking at the other sites, we were made aware that the township has um, is considering this site for a new fire station headquarters and safety complex, and that's really the only sentence that we know or have uncovered. So in terms of the size or of that or how far they are long in planning for any of that, um, it was really unknown at this time for, for our study. Okay. We have one here and then we'll go back to the chat. Go ahead. All right, I'll try and <laughs> I'll try and speak up and repeat the questions. Go ahead. Yes. Work been done on either Mill River or the Eleven Mile site as far as soil testing. So there's a question. Because the reason I ask that because it, the whole township is wet. Water table is rising. 
And I figure it's going to get worse because we've got definite climate change coming. It's worse than what we're dealing with. We've seen the storms and whatnot. We're going to be inundated. And the township already is low as far as. So the question related to whether there was additional soil borings and testing done at either the um, Mill River site or the uh, 11 Mile and Milford Road site. Um, we did not do additional soil borings at the Mill River site. Um, we do know that there's substantial construction happened very close to there with the, with the Abbey Park on that. Um, and there's not wetlands on that property at all. And so um, at this point, the library and board didn't invest in additional testing there. On the site at 11 Mile and Milford Road, the city, the township had completed uh, some soil borings and geotechnical studies on that. And so we used that to inform where we were looking at placing the library building on the site where the detention pond is set on the site. And those soils have a much more normal structural capacity um, on that site. So the study had been done already on that, okay. um, but was not done I at this site. I also a couple of comments. And one was that um, your comment about a two-story building here, the separation of a parent here and a child there, some of that is needed anyway. This building does not accommodate well adults and children as close proximity as they are. There needs to be noise barriers. And we don't have it. Right. We we would there would be a a distinct difference in a building that was three or more than three times the building, size. You're still going to need people upstairs and downstairs, just the same as you would in a one story with a person this in and a person that in. So I don't buy this separation or you need a librarian here or a librarian there. It's gonna happen anyway. It's the size of the building merits it. It's, yeah, it's a library staffing and safety issue for sight lines and knowing what's happening in the building. Site three, I think the second site on that, you've got a building one and a building two. Right, so right. Myself, I would rather see building two because mm -hmm. you're coming off 11 mile and 11 mile is going to go into the intersection of 11 and Milford rather than straight from building one onto Milford as close as it is to the corner and the traffic light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be interesting. Okay, something um, else. Yeah, there's chat. there's a few more questions on the chat. Um, whatever location is chosen, will we still have a community center to reserve? Um, we would still have, but, but we use this as our program room, but it's called the community center. But we basically provide the services as if it were a community center. And yes, the plan is that we would still have multi-purpose program rooms. Um, that would be, you know, small rooms to be used for smaller meetings, private study rooms, and program space. Um, are these 2022 cost estimates? Um, building costs are up 25 to 30 percent over 2021 numbers. Building costs are are up and um, going up. These costs are assuming a construction start in. 2023 is assume fall of 2023 construction start. So um, that may be ambitious in terms of of where um, you are in the process. Uh, and so then that there would be escalation, you know, I think, on, I think, on top of that, I think the question but the was, question is when we're looking at the costs and and these costs are assuming construction is starting in fall of 2023. Um, question, does the township have a preference on sites? 
<laughs> well, that's what we're going to find out. We don't know. So, if an alternate site is, what happens to this site? Reverse back to the township? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, we are renters here. So, they own this facility. And what they would plan to do with it after we vacate it would be up to them. It's their property. We have a, we have a question in the far back. You mentioned early on about a potential cost impact of the consent decree. Could you explain that in more detail? So the question is with regards to the consent decree on the Mill River site. And I'll have Holly speak in if, if I don't explain it correctly, we think. Um, Further in, after we studied this site initially, further information came in and that the property had been given to the township to use for a community use such as a library, but there was a rider then there that if the construction company that was donating it was not used to build the building, you would have to pay them an additional 16% of the construction costs. So um, th that has to track through the legality and how that works. And so a simple way could be that if that construction company built the building, there would not be an additional 16% cost owed to them, right? But it might be the case where then you got bids and you understood what the value is or not of that. That was what cost. I was led to believe. That's our current understanding. I think it if if warrants more investigation and in going forward, but that is a large number. Is that 16% included in that cost? No. Okay. So this yeah, this awesome. cost number goes up to, to almost 11.2 million on this site, if indeed you are having to, to pay this builder 16% of the cost. And this was, this was a general number that we picked because we don't know the details of, is that just the building cost that you have to pay in the consent decree? Is it the building and the site improvement costs that you have to pay to them? Does it include the furnishing? You know, what actually is included that you're having to pay the 16% on needs more unpacking. But that total cost, it's, it's really small on the slide. And all of these slides, anything that you're seeing tonight will be posted to our website later this week, so you can look at it in more detail. But it's, it, it is there, that 11,000, it's really tiny, so you can't see it. 11,000? 11,000. Oh my gosh, 11 million. I'll, I'll donate that. <laughs> There was building, would it have, have to pay rent, like this building rent? No. Um, so that becomes, uh, there is the an intergovernmental. Question, the question was if you have to pay rent. No. Um, and we had this agreement when um, we did the 2016, before we even went on the ballot. There's an intergovernmental agreement that is done between the library and the township that says that the library is Taking, getting a millage to pay back the bond for the construction cost. And until that bond is paid off, it is owned by the township and the property is the township's. And then when it ends, they will, they will not uh, charge any rent or fees. And it, it, then at that point, once it's paid off, it becomes ownership of the library. So we would do that again. There would be an, an intergovernmental agreement that stipulates that. Yeah. There was well, a question. I don't know that we have an answer, but someone wanted to know who the construction company was in the consent agreement. Um, whoever not, built Avon Park, right? We're not at liberty to. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm, also, I'm not really sure if that's a legal document yeah. that's with the township. Yeah. And yes. they could contact township they offices. Talk to the township. The, talk talk to the township. The township, the township offices sure. could explain more on what that. Consent yeah. decree is we we clearly just didn't want to ignore it here because it could be a significant cost. 
but it might not be. And so that's why it's sort of left below the line. Do you know if that consent judgment applies only to the construction of a library or any building that the township erects on that site? So for we the new don't. fire department, for instance, might yeah. be subject to the same consent judgment. Yeah, we don't know okay. clearly need more shared on that if that's the site that's so another millage proposal would go on for a vote there would need to be another millage pro yeah, there proposal would be, so we have for our a cap rating millage mm -hmm. that's you know that's what we use to and then there would be a separate millage that would be for a bond which would be to pay for construction costs so i will give you an example that what we had on the ballot in 2016, it was 0.5585 mills was what the millage was that was just for bond construction. Yeah, and I voted for it. Yeah. <laughs> not enough people did. So. No, unfortunately not. So we would have to do the same thing again. We would have to, once we had the total cost, we would be able to figure out what the millage would be for a 30 year bond. Yeah. Does anyone up there, can you approximately tell me what an acre of land would go for in the township? I mean, I know locations vary, but and how many acres would you need for a library? Well, I mean, I we estimated eight, eight wasn't it a minimum of eight acres that we would need for the library, but as for Cost. Yes. I think that really depends on where it is and how good quality the, the property is. But we know that when we were selecting what we were looking for, the bare minimum that we needed that would be a good site for a library is that we want it to be centrally located within the township, if possible. We need it to be on a paved road. I don't think a lot of people want to drive down a dirt road to get to the library. <laughs> and it has to be a minimum of eight acres. That's a large piece of Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does the current operating millage, is that adequate to support a 19,000 square foot facility? So our current operating millage, what was voted on was, um, sorry, I can't see that. <laughs> um, is, was 0.89. It's now less than that due to heavy rollback. Um, but we have been sucking money away to be able to put into our fund balance because this current operating millage expires in 2017. So if we were to get into a new facility, we not would, in 2017, 2020, oh no. 20, so, yeah, 20, 27, yes, 27, yes, <laughs> oh my God, yes, <laughs> <laughs> this one would expire. And at that time, um, we would have to get a renewal on our operating millage and my guess is that it would need to be a little bit higher than what we have right now not as high as what we asked for actually in 2015 and there's a reason for that we asked for a higher millage at that time because 15 percent of our budget was being captured by the dda and so we had to factor in an operating millage that 15 percent of it was getting captured they have recently passed, since then they have passed a law in Michigan that libraries do not have to be subject to DDA capture. So our millage is no longer being subjected to DDA capture. So if we don't have to factor in that extra 15%, that lowers the amount of operating millage that we need. So it will be less than what we asked for in, in 2015 for sure, but probably a little bit higher than what we have now, just because of the increased operating costs of operating a building three times the size. I what is the um, acreage there? We were calculating site work on 3.7 acres. It was a, it's a larger, the, library the site for the others. Seven or four acres, why is it eight acres necessary? What happens when the township gets larger and the library needs to expand and there isn't any room? And we're going through this all again. 
Yeah, I, th I mean, I think if there was a property that was donated that was between that was between you know five and eight acres, we would definitely take a look at that. <laughs> the library board would take a look at at a property that was somewhere between five and eight acres if it was was donated. Okay. You want to take a few more? Sure. If there's more. In okay. There. What sites does the library staff prefer? <laughs> Any? The, the staff actually, I think it's, it, it could be split. I haven't actually asked everybody individually which they want, but I bet you not everybody wants the same one. So, but that will also be taken into consideration when we make the selection. We consider our staff and board as part of our stakeholders, and so. Um, you know, they know, you know, they have insight too into what can be best to serve the community. So we will be taking that into consideration. Thanks for asking. Yep. When is the millage going to the voters? We don't know because this part of this process is getting community feedback on um, what site the community may like from these three sites, but we have to get township permission and engagement on moving forward on any of these. So it's possible that we can go and say the if the township um, with our proposal in March and the library says, this is our top site, this is our top two site, we don't really want to do number three, whatever that is, and the township board may say no to all of it. I don't know. And then we've got to come up with a new plan. So right now we're just trying to be flexible. We're trying to come up with a plan that works for everybody. And we have, you know, other options that we may have to consider, but we're trying to come up with the best possible plan. So when this would be on the ballot, I can't tell you that right now. There's too many moving parts at this time. Okay. Um, does the site work, do the site work costs at the different locations include any wetland mitigation? Um, there are wetlands that, um, they're delineated in green when you get the slides or the, I'm pointing to the board that we have up here. Um, so there are wetlands on both site two and three, but in both those cases where we will place the building is, and parking does not impact the wetlands so that there's not a need for mitigation. Um, oh, go ahead. On site two, I don't know if I'm seeing the boundaries correctly. Is there still more land north of there? Yes, this is quite a large site, but you will see how much of that is green, which is wetlands. Okay. So you can see that the actual boundary and, and there is a setback from the wetlands. So that's the sort of the smaller dash line here okay. is the setback from the wetlands. So without impacting the wetlands, that is a, a, a much smaller sort of buildable area. Um, a question here, what's the best way for the public to advocate to the Lyon Township Board on behalf of the library? Um, show up to the meetings when we're on the agenda. That's one of the most important ways because then you can get up under um, you know, open to the public and you can get up and tell them your opinion and uh, voice what it is that you want in the community because we, you know, right now, you know, this isn't a township board meeting. And um, so they're not hearing all of these comments. They're not hearing this, this discussion. And we can tell them X amount of people came to the meeting and X amount of people were on Zoom. But if there's nobody actually sitting in chairs at those meetings, I don't know if your voices will be heard. So the best way is when topics for the library are on their agenda would be to come. And if you, we have a, our newsletter, so everything about any meeting that we're going to be at will be in our e-newsletter, which goes out. We also have a specific newsletter, newsletter that's about uh, new library planning. So if you signed up for either of those on our website, you would get newsletters that are just specific to that. The general newsletter covers everything we've got going on. If you want to get the newsletter that's just specific to new library planning, you can sign up for that one. 
inform colleagues who you receive the date for the next meeting that you're on the agenda. Yes, um, the, we are on the agenda for the township board meeting on Monday, March 7th. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Seven. And um, uh, Anne from Quinn Evans is going to be there to give the similar presentation as what she gave tonight. And the library board will be presenting the findings and the feedback that came from you all at that time. So we can kind of get that across. And then, but it'll be tomorrow night at the library board meeting that the library board will have a chance to discuss what it is that they're actually going to be asking for. So if, you know, not, I know it's a lot to ask for people to come out two nights in a row to a meeting. I know that's not always the most exciting thing in the world, but that's why we also have these forms. If there's anything that you want the library board to know, your opinion, what are, which property do you think is best and why? We have these forms here. There is also, there's a special page on our website that's all new library planning. Any of the documents that we're going to, from this meeting are going to be posted there. Our strategic plan is on there. The plans from 2016, the plan that we gave to the township board in 2020, everything's there. You can see it in all of its glory and detail as much as you want. There's also a form on that webpage. If you wanna give a comment or ask a question, you can do it right there too, and we'll get right back to you. Okay, so uh, site one and site three, uh, might technically be conflicted. So site one with the uh, uh, firehouse and site three, uh, right now their plan is to have this park, right? Um, and so um, I think there's a <laughs> speculation in terms of how strongly they're looking for the moving on the park. Yeah. But yes. Okay, thanks. I've been to a few of the township meetings where they've talked about this library proposal and it's, I won't go into the gory details surrounding that, but are you, is there contesting financial information that the township is going to present as a counter to your figures in any of the improvements or whatnot, not to your building construction costs, but site improvements? Are, is the township in agreement with those or do they, you think they have a different figure that they're coming up with, or you don't know? I, I don't know. We did um, speak with Leslie Zawada, who is the township engineer, and asked her for input. I know that Anne requested several documents from her, like the soil borings and the information that they had. Um, and, you know, we've been working with them. Whether they decide that they don't like the numbers that we present, I guess we'll find out. The um, the cost information on crossing the drain that six uh, six hundred and eighty thousand dollars that came yeah, from their yeah. their figure on that um, and we do know that that they seem to think um, coming off of Milford Road for the park would not be acceptable um, in our sight line distance studies and improvements, there would need to be some improvements on Milford Road. You wouldn't just come out, but widening that we've included in that. Um, our conversations with the County Road Commission are that for the library use, that could be, that that there's potential there. There's a question in the chat. Is there a scope of expansion i.e. constructing another floor in future in case either sites one or three are chosen. So I don't know if that means like building up we, or. I think both those properties have the space where we would look at designing a building with sort of a, a structural system so that it could be continued as a single level building to add, you know, another, 4,000 or 6,000 square feet as the library would grow. Okay, this one's also kind of related. Is there a plan for expansion as the population grows? Recently moved here from Clinton Township and we had a 84,000 square foot library. <laughs> it was also located within a park area. I can't even fathom. <laughs> we, did just, we did just complete a new 30,000 square foot library for the Clinton Macomb 
library township in Macomb, uh, in Macomb Township. Um, I, that was part of our study in 2016 was looking at the growth of the township and the township being the fastest growing township in Michigan at that point in time and considering um, we the slide where we showed the different libraries, we, we looked at a broader spectrum thinking of sort of the library systems that a lot of the people moving into the township might be familiar with in terms of, of square footage as well, because we know people are coming here from, from libraries that are, that are very different and, and expecting that. And I think that's really that pressure. And that was, um, where in that study, as well as here, we thought it was important to look at what size of the building we felt that the population today could use and would be a dollar amount that could pass um, the ballot for, for, a, for a millage, not seeming extravagant, but having that design built into it so that there was a logical expansion plan for the, for the building. Can you interest me this approach on building one at site three? Has that ever been run by Oakland County uh, traffic? Off of 11 mile? No, off of building one on site three. Oh, looking at the potential of coming off of Milford Road? There have been initial discussions with the County Road Commission. Okay, one way or another. They, they have they have said that to that that there would be road improvements needed in it. They didn't the say that it wouldn't be, you know. Right, right, right. Because because what we've looked at and shown is the distances for sight lines that are required and, and where that entrance would be coming both from the intersection and there's a curve to the north. And so that's what there appear to be the right amount of site distances to, to put in a entry there. Is there a is plain Debbie Downer, I guess. Mm -hmm. Let's say they say no to all three sites. Do you guys have an alternative site that you've identified? Maybe that doesn't meet your criteria that you want, but that you've identified that would be a good location that the township owns and you can ask for. So we have a couple options for plan B. There is um a new development that will be going in front of the uh, planning commission that is potentially going to offer us a piece of property, um, but they haven't been in front of the planning commission, so I can't really speak anything to that, but we've already been in discussions uh, with them. We have also uh, talked to one of our board members has been investigating other properties within the township with the commercial real estate agent and looking into what that might have to what that cost could be also looking at places that you know maybe we could uh get a donation of prop so we're we are literally investigating all possible options uh to try and make the best financial decision uh to keep the cost to, to get us the best library with uh the least amount of Well, if there's uh, no more questions at this time, I really want to thank everybody for uh, coming out. Um, and I think we're going to have a vote. Are you, there are stickers. For, for people who are want to. want to, willing and able, you may remember from if you were here when we looked at all the various sites and it helped us nail, nail it down. If you want to, just as a graphic, put a sticker on one of the three sites on this poster up here on um, which you're, which you would put your thumb on today. There's stickers there. On site three, I think it's just, we would, there'd be a lot more investigation in terms of if we could move forward on site three in terms of which option. So it's not necessarily this is the, this is the option or the other one. I think there's a lot more to understand there in terms of entry access and where a building and a park, how much the park plays into it. So it's really the site and not the building for those who want to. I um, also just want to, again, reiterate that all of the information 
will be on the website. So please check the future library plan page on the website. Um, this is being recorded and will be uploaded. There'll be a link on the website also if you want to review it. And any of the questions that were asked, we'll try to um, get the, um, the Q&A put on there as well. And yes, um, the question in the chat, can people in the chat vote? Yes, you can vote in the chat or you can contact the library to vote. Um, but if you wanna just put choice one, two or three in the chat, that's acceptable and that counts as a vote. And thank you for coming digitally as well as in person. I'm going to stop recording, but you can just leave it open for a minute.